That's you wanting more. It's Talk future. future. Talk future. Ten. ten he has like what? Ten shows? Ten of them. Ten. God. NBA young boy. What? Ten. ten of them. All of them girls. So you have one sexually irresponsible man. But you have seven sexually irresponsible women or wow. irresponsible women. Blaming the woman. Listen to this. If you're a woman, why are you laying down with the man that you know that does not take care of his children? Uh-oh. Guys, I'm filming what horizontal instead of vertical. And that's because I'm going to be using um, my board there. And we're going to be breaking down the conversation that Poor Men's Podcast had uh, with this woman <clears throat> discussing relationships. And so I'm going to be putting in some clips so you guys can watch it. Yes, I'm editing. <laughs> I'm going to put in some clips and then we're going to be breaking down this conversation because I, I feel as though um, that uh, this needs further discussion um, because I believe a lot of the things that the woman was saying is the messaging or the talking points that we get out here today, but they're not really based in logic, reason, facts, um, statistics, or anything uh, that involves critical thinking. I want you to, if you haven't watched it, I'll put a link below, but if you go and watch it, you'll see how many times she makes statements talking about, I feel, I feel, I feel. And it's just feelings, it's just thoughts, and even the arguments that they're made, they're very circular. The goalpost keeps getting pushed past. Um, uh, things that Poor Men's Podcast would say were just kind of dismissed and it was on to the next thing or trying to poke holes in the argument. I know a lot of people think that that's a good way to debate, but it actually isn't. Um, and so I want to break this down a little bit further so we can really have the discussion um, in a way that uh, is irrefutable. So here we go. <laughs> Yeah, so like men, y'all base that DM on what she looks like and y'all have no idea like what she has in her head, what she has going for herself. So you're telling me that women go based on the wrong things, but you're going based on nothing but physical. How's that not the wrong? Well, men are visual creatures. And I think where women fail, especially in 2021, is women try to be the same as men. I think at first it was about equality. Now women want to be the same as men. But nature has different has a different role in that. So men are allowed to be physically attracted to a woman, but women are not allowed to be physically attracted to a man? You are, but if you go for a man that's physically attractive, then you're looking for the wrong things. Don't you want a protector and a provider? So you just said it yourself. If you go for him that's physically attractive, you're going after the wrong things, but then you turn around and said the question was, women are the reason why relationships are failing in 2021. You clearly just told me men are physical. When you go after physical, you're going after the wrong thing. So how are men not the issue? Well, men and women are different. You got to understand that. Ooh, Off the rip. So and I know, that that's, I know that's controversial. You can't even say that nowadays. You can't. You because can't. how are men and women different? We both can't. We were both born the same way. You give. We both have the same mind. We both have the same opportunities. So how are we different? You give birth, don't you? That's the only thing. That's a pretty big difference when you're talking about dating based on attraction. Especially when women have the pick of the litter. See, men have to deal with what we can get. Women have the pick of the litter, the litter and you get to choose the men the that you have. Litter. So I have up here is the woman, I don't know her name, and I have PMP for Poor Man's Podcast. So I'm not going to go through every point because a lot of it was just, um, just too rid ridiculous. And so, but the first, one of the first things that stood out to me that she said um, was that there is no difference between men and women. So I'm going to put right here, no difference. Hopefully you guys can see this. <clears throat> I may have to get thicker markers. Poor Men's Podcast points out how men and women are different. One of the first things he says is that women can give birth. Okay? So we know right here he says we are different. A quick peruse just on Wikipedia will talk about the biological physiological, DNA level, and also psychologically how men and women differ. This has been proven by science over and over, even anatomy-wise, bone density, um, our hormones, um, uh, even there's diseases that only women can get, there are diseases that only men can get. Um, these are, there are strong differences between men and women, um, and this is proven at every single level, okay? Uh, and so when she says this, we know this is a disingenuous, uh, disingenuous argument because she then goes on the entire, the entire video pointing out the differences 
and perceived inequities that men and women have. So right away, she disproves this point throughout the entire thing by showing how men and women are different. But she's saying that we're not different because we have the same opportunities, we have the same um, uh, uh, minds, and we have this, that, and the other. Uh, this is absolutely false. It's just not true, even emotionally. I think we can we we all know this in, innately. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and cross this out because right here we know that that she lost this argument here. This makes no common sense. It's too much for me to get into or to actually go into the details of this. But she proved it herself if you watch the full video. There are more women on this earth than there are men. So therefore, men have the pick of a litter. You can you can walk into a room it's and you can true. choose from 10 women. Women, we have to settle. We have... We have to pick and choose what we decide we're going to deal with and what we're not going to deal with because there are not enough men out here that are readily available. So if women, if, so do you think men have more options than women? Way more. So if you text every man in your phone right now and you say you want to smash tonight, what's your success rate on that? A hundred percent. Okay. Now ask me the same question. That's different. Though. It depends on how you look. That's, That's what I would answer to. And, and if you ask for my response on that. That's so different. what I'm basically trying to say is women have the sexual selection. So you get to choose who you want to be involved with. Men are easy. That's the only reason why I can say 100 percent. Like the thing is, I feel like women are not as easy to get with them as men are. And it is what it is. Like men can be in an entire relationship and you can tell them, hey, I want to fuck you tonight. And they will jump on that. This, and they will forget what they have at home, but I feel like women think a little bit more into that before they make that decision. Okay, basically what I'm trying to get at is this. If you want a man that can protect and provide for you because that's a male's role, why are you judging who you want to be with based on appearance? So the next thing you talk about in this is um, how she talks about how men have the pick of the litter when it comes to women. And women really don't have choices, they have to settle. So I'm gonna put here, her argument is that men have uh, choices and women must, okay, must settle. So, poor man's position on this, and he proves this by saying, if you were to date, if you were to message 100 guys on your phone right now and say that you wanted to smash tonight or me message everyone on your phone, what would be your response rate if you said you wanted to smash tonight? She said it was 100% that every dude that she reached out to her phone, if she, if, they wanted, if she reached out and said she wanted to smash, they would all respond positively and, and, and come knock it down. He says... For men, this is not true. For men, men have to take what they can get, all right? Men cannot just, you know, men take <clears throat> what they can get. He goes on to prove this by saying if a man was to just start writing, uh, texting a bunch of women in his phone, just straight up, I'm trying to smash tonight. What would be his, uh, I guess, recidivism rate? I don't know, his response rate into that. And we all know that right now, even as a woman, logically, if you think through, if a man just DM'd you that you're not in a relationship with, that you're not with, unless you're trying to give him, even a guy that you really liked, if he just were to just text you, I'm trying to hit it tonight, what would you think? Most women would be disgusted by him. Most women would not respond. Most women would find him gross. He's, he's this, that, and the other. So right away, once again, going back to the point where she's proving this thing, where she says men aren't different from when men and women aren't different. She's proven right here just by saying this and agreeing. She agreed that, that she could do this, but most men can't. So there are several studies that have been done specifically with dating apps that show that um, there are more men on dating apps than there are women. It also shows that women have a much higher response rate. They have a, a much easier time on dating apps finding someone than men. And in fact, it has been shown through studies that the top 10%, okay, the top 10% get 80% of the women on dating apps, all right? And the top 20% take about 90%. 
That means the 10% that's left of, 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 of women, the, the other 80% of men get those women, all right? So right away, even the data has shown that this is not true, okay? Women have a plethora of options when it comes to sex. If we're referring to sex, yes, women have a plethora of options, Okay, she actually didn't say this. Um, he actually makes that point uh, in several videos and even in this one. Women do not, women have an advantage when it comes to sex, and we know that we do. Men have an advantage when it comes to relationship. And this is where a lot of women get confused because a lot of women will sleep with men, right, in hopes that they will then come and be with them and knock it down. In fact, we're going to turn this and we'll come back to this. <clears throat> we're going to turn this over. All right, so this is this is how this looks. All right, and I even did a video. There's a guy named Wheat Waffles. I did a video. Um, he actually really breaks down dating and the availability of women towards men and that type of thing. And it's really rooted in research and study. Okay, so but what, if we take a woman on a dating app, all right? So this is this is this is the girl. You know, she's got her little hair. She's smiling. There she is. She's on the dating app, right? When she goes on the dating app, all right, she will have men from all types of categories. We'll, we'll, we'll label these guys up here. You know, these are, you know, the, the hot guys. We'll say the guys that a lot of women want, the hot guys. Then she will also have men who are just kind of like, you know, pretty good, you know? I'll put pretty good. Right? Then she'll also have average guys. Then she'll have below average. One of the points she brings up is that is that men um, men base everything off of looks, and that women should be able to as well. Um, but that uh, men are more focused on looks than women. It was very confusing. There was no consistency with this. Let me move this over, guys. You guys know how it is here. It's a little, little ghetto in the way I do my stuff. A little ratchet. But she will have all of these guys trying to hit her up, even if she is average. Sometimes even below average, she will still get hit up by these guys. Why is this? Okay, why is this? Because why would the hot guy hit up the average woman when he can get the highest woman? Because for a lot of men, they will see an average, like, so if a hot guy is up here, you know, a lot of women want him, he will still knock down an average chick. Why is that? Because they are, they are much more sexual creatures than we are. And if they can see something as easy prey, as an easy kill, as an easy thing to get with, which a hot, for a hot guy, an average woman will generally be easier because she's excited that this guy who is really out of my league, looks wise, is interested in me. And so because of that, she because this hot guy is coming after her, which she thinks it's intentions, okay? So when the hot guy comes after her, or anything above average, anything that's uh, that's not her um, her equal in looks, right, tries to come at her. She doesn't even talk about below average. She'll just kick that guy to the curb. He, he doesn't even stand a chance. The average guy really doesn't either, so we'll cross him out. The hot and the pretty good looking guys get that chance. Why? Guys will knock it down. It's easy, it's easy, it's easy uh, pickings, all right? It's harder to knock down a Naomi Campbell a Rihanna, uh, I don't know, um, I don't know. Just somebody really, really good looking, somebody up here. It takes more work. These women are higher in the totem pole of looks, and so they have more men coming their way. They've been exposed to higher end guys. They, they, there's more competition for hot guys to get with a hot woman because everybody wants that woman. That woman has a plethora of hot guys who actually want to be with her. But see, for the average woman, what we will believe as average women is that that hot guy, that pretty good looking guy, when he comes to knock it down or he's hitting us up in our DMs or whatever, that he actually wants to be with us. We confuse two things. We confuse sexual attention We confuse it with intentions, 
okay? This is what we confuse. We think because this hot guy will knock it down as an average woman, we start to see ourselves as this. This is who we want. This is who we pursue because obviously that is my looks class. And a lot of people say, well, looks don't matter. It doesn't this, that, and the other. God made us all equal. Listen, even the Bible talks about how some people look better than the other. They were beautiful, okay? They, they, so, I mean, if you want to live in this kind of bubble of, of, of non-reality, looks do matter in this world. They may not matter to God, all right? They may not make a difference in you going to heaven or whatever you believe in, but they matter on this earth. We all know it. Stop pretending. Stop the cap. So, you look average, but because the hot guy knocks you down, he's just giving you sexual attention because he wants to hit. You're easy pickings. I'm easy pickings because we're average. The hot guy does not have intentions towards us. And why is that? This is what it goes back to when she says um, <clears throat> men have choices, all right? She is presuming right that the average and the below average looking man has all these choices this is not true and this is tells you where she's actually assigning the same um opportunities to all men regardless of looks right she said it but it's the hot guy that has an, an, uh, an endless plethora of options that is what she's not recognizing. So when she's saying women have to settle, what she's saying is that an average woman has to settle for someone on her same level or what she perceives to be below. When the reality is that these two are equally yoked when it comes to looks. The hot guy has lots of choices, but only 10% of men fit this category. So you're assigning the same opportunities of women to every man, and this is not true. But this shows that women only care what the hot 10% man is doing. They do not care even what the pretty good looking guy is doing really that much, maybe a little bit. But the average, and certainly not the below average, do they care. So yes, <clears throat> men have choices, but it shouldn't be men. It should be Top, you guys probably can't see this, but I'm writing top 10% of men have these choices. While the other 90% do not, the other 90% have to settle. And when we go back really quickly, let's take a look at this. <clears throat> Sexual attention. A man will knock down just about anything. Not all men, but a lot of men who are in that mindset, especially when they're younger, will knock down anything, anything they can get if they're feeling a certain way. Easy, slim, easy picking, easy pickings, okay? And this is where that comes in. It is not intentions, but a lot of us as women, we confuse this sexual attention being knocked down as intentions that this man wants to be with us, that he, 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 has, he wants to date us, he, he wants to go somewhere with us, he wants to develop a relationship, get married. You know, we, we, we assign these positive motives to a man who really just wants to knock it down, all right? And this is where a lot of pain comes from women because it's the top 10% that is knocking down women freely, but because we know in our heart we are average and we've never had you know, the hot guys really coming after us. But, you know, with uh, dating apps and things and social media, men have, you know, we have now access to all types of guys around the world who may be in that top category and they're willing to knock it down on us. So we start to see ourselves as this. For some reason, we don't want to be honest with our looks. We don't want to be honest about things. All right, or we don't want the average guy who really wants to be with us or wants to, to be that good man in our life. We want the hottest one. We want the one to show off with. We want the one that all girls are like, oh, girl, he's fine. Oh, girl, he's this, that, and the other. We don't want the guy on our center level. So her conversation is really coming from that. And we know this because she then goes on to bring up an example of Tristan Thompson. We'll get to the Tristan Thompson thing in a second. But I think right here we can now eliminate this. Yes, the top 10% of men have these options. 
but not the average man. So this right here, and she goes on to actually disprove her own point. So once again, poor men's podcast was correct. Because you have to be sexually and physically attracted to a person. I feel like, why do, why do women, why do we have to accept the bare minimum? But for men, y'all, mm. we have to come with 100%. We have to check off every box. But as women, we have to be like, you know what? He provides. He, he, he's, he's loyal, so therefore he doesn't have to be physically attractive. What, what boxes is y'all, are y'all checking off? Let me know what you... We, tra we check off everything. We are smart. Okay. We provide. We're good wives. We're good mothers. We have good. We come from good homes. We can cook. We can clean. We're good in bed. Like everything that we have to mount up to, we do. And I feel like as women, unfortunately, we have to settle. The next thing they talk about is she says that you know going back to this thing where women have to settle. They have to settle. Um, and a man as far as his looks and how much money he has, all these other things, right? That, um, <clears throat> that men are getting the, the better deal when it comes to women, all right? So women get the short end of the stick. We get the short end. And that men, men, right, they win when they get a woman, okay? That men are winning. What did she say in this video? I'm gonna list it out because I think uh, you guys need to actually see what she actually had to say. So let's go to this, this next point. So she, when poor men asks her, what is it that men are getting from women, right? She starts to assign these values to all women. The number one thing she says that women bring is they're smart. Keep in mind, she said all women are smart. The next thing, Women provide. Women are now the providers. They are providing the resources. That they are, all women are good wives. Number four, oh, they're all good mothers. Number five, we all come from good homes. <clears throat> Next thing, women, I gotta keep going. we cook, we all cook, we all clean, and we're all good in bed. So this is all women. She's saying that when a man gets with any woman, she is going to be automatically smart. She's going to be the provider. She That she's going to be a good wife. She's going to be a good mother. And she definitely comes from a good home. She cooks, cleans, and is good in bed. All women are this. This is what her argument is, guys. This is why men are getting the good end of the stick and that women are getting really nothing because they come ready to go across the board like this. If this was true, why have marriage rates declined so rapidly? If women were all of this automatically standard model, why are men not running to get married right away? Why are they not marrying the first one who went? Because she will then goes on. You can see in this conversation, she assigns these negative things towards men, meaning that if a woman is smart, well, maybe men aren't smart. Uh, men aren't really good providers. Men aren't good husbands. Men aren't good fathers. Men don't come from good homes. Men don't cook. Men don't clean. Men aren't good in bed. I don't even think I need to break this down, but I think <laughs> a basic elementary education, um, just watching the news or anything else, I just think anybody's own family uh, can actually say that this is not true across the board. If this were all women were this way, and especially coming from good families, all women cook. Growing up, my father was the cook in the family. My father came from a better home than my mother did. 
So that just on those two points alone, what are you talking about? It's been proven that women statistically are more hoarders than men. And it's about women provide more, women also spend more, and women do not provide more as far as resources. Not only that, men aren't demanding that women provide for them. Women are. Women want to provide for themselves and then take the provision from a man. All women are good in bed. I can't speak to that because I'm not a man, but I think men in the comments will let me know whether this is true or not. And then as far as smart, now smart can be judged by different things, but if we wanna talk about the professions that men actually enter, science, tech, math, engineering, statistically, they are taking the jobs of scientists. They are the rocket scientists. Men are doing more of the medical work. Men are doing more of the technology. Men are doing these things. And am I saying they're smarter? I think we, I think it's not that they're smarter, but men are taking roles and jobs that require more brain power. A lot, it statistically has been showing women do not prefer these types of jobs. We want jobs that are very different from men that don't require the same amount of, um, I guess you could say study or, or work or these jobs that actually are require a certain type of, uh, of education in order to do them. We are not running to these jobs that require a ton of this, this, this science, the this science, technology, engineering and math. If that were true, only women would be fulfilling those roles in great numbers that we would greatly outdo men. Women are not going to college to study STEM. Men are. All right, we are going to study uh, communication. We're going to study uh, uh, fine arts and, and language and, and humanities. Uh, we're going into things. Some women are doing STEM, but the vast majority are not. And in fact, when a woman is in those programs, there's a lot of scholarships for women like that. There's a lot of companies that want to hire women for these positions. In fact, they, will, they are doing specific campaigns to hire women in these jobs because women do not want them. It's not what we, what you know, we can say what we want, but the facts and statistics bear out something different. So right here we already know, okay, so men are not getting the short end. I mean, women are not getting the short end of the stick. It is women that are choosing men for the wrong reasons. We're choosing the top 10% men are trying to go after that top 10% man who has plenty of options. We don't want the man that's average and that is will be faithful, that will be you know loyal. That or we're not picking men based on things that are lifelong lasting. All right, we're picking things based on um, our, a lot of times it's just what our feelings are going towards and where we have this kind of fantasy princess mentality that um, he's going to be tall, dark, and handsome. He might someday my prince will come. And so we keep pursuing men who have these options, who have no desire to be Prince Charming to us, all right? And so a lot of times they're saying men are, well, how is it that we are getting the short end? When the reality is, I think a lot of men will say the same thing. She goes on to talk about how men are cheating in these mass numbers. Well, it's been proven statistically that women cheat just as much, okay? Women also leave relationships the most by outstanding, like, it's in like I, I believe it's like 70% of relationships are ended by women. So right here are who is actually getting the short end of the stick. But once again, she proves this wrong. And even by her assigning all these Madonna-like traits of women, it's just, I mean, uh, it's just false. It's a false equivalency. Now let's get to Tristan Thompson. She uses Tristan Thompson as an example of a man who was not being faithful and is running around with all these different women. I don't have any more family, right? And that's because the women, what we want from women, they're not providing to us. We don't have any stability in our household. When you look at the Martin Luther King movement, when you look at the Malcolm X movement, when you look at Black Wall Street, all of that was built by black families, not by black women being independent women, looking for the, the highest guy on the totem pole that they can get. Because you understand that when men have opportunity, like you said, they largely do not settle down with one woman. So why are women looking for men that are the most handsome and tallest guy that got all the money when that's not the guy that's statistically speaking going to stick with you? And you know that because you just said it. So to go back to your point, the reason why we don't have families is because black men are not present. Oh. Let's take 
a plethora of examples. Let's look at Tristan Thompson. Tristan has a third baby mama, okay? Mm -hmm. And he was willingly sleeping with this woman unprotected, nutting in her, mm. okay? Right. He knew what the outcome could be. Right, right. But as soon as she got pregnant, he said, well, I'm not going to be present. So okay. why are you even having the baby? So why, why are you having unprotected sex with a woman when you don't even plan on being present for a, a possible baby that could happen? Okay, listen to let's this, Let's take though. future. Hit me out. Let's okay, take, yeah, go ahead. Talk, talk let's future. Take future. Talk future. Ten, ten, he has like what, ten children? Ten of them. Ten. God. NBA young boy. What? Ten. ten of them. All of them girls. So you have one sexually irresponsible man, but you have seven sexually irresponsible women. Or in Future's case, you said ten, nine sexually wow. irresponsible women. Because why so would you. blaming the woman. Listen to this. If you're a woman, why are you laying down with the man that you know that does not take care of his children? Uh-oh, you're going after status symbols. You're going after men that you find that are successful that already have the clout. You know that they're not going to stick to you. You already said that. And then when you get left in the dust, you cry on social media like this, like you didn't know it was going like, to happen. You knew what you came is, for. Y'all know how men are. Uh -oh. Men can go into a relationship. They might have a bad history. They might have a bad rap. But when, they, when you go into the relationship, they might be telling you sweet nothings. Okay? Next thing you know, you think you're different. Uh oh. Okay? So you think you're different and you feel like the story might play out differently for you. So, how are you going to blame the woman when it's the man that has the children? This woman is coming in, a, no kids, no history. The man has all the history. And you're telling me you want to blame the woman? I blame the woman because she's dealing with a man she knows is, it, number one, because she's dealing with a man that she knows is inconsistent. Number two, because she has birth control, she has plan Bs, she has. And men can't, and men has, can't, hold on, hold on. No, I got men you. can't okay, pull out. I got you. Men she, can't just be responsible. I got you. I got you. She has birth control, plan Bs. She has condoms. Worst case scenario, she has reproductive rights. She when a condoms. man, when a man sleeps with a woman and that child or that, what it is, I ain't trying to, you know, for the, for the algorithm. When it goes inside of her, that's up to her. He is 100% responsible. The government will even hold him responsible. A woman can put a child up for adoption and have no, no, no connection to that child whatsoever. Men have less reproductive rights than women. Now, we can talk about condoms, but if we just keeping it a buck, these women decided to lay down with men that they knew were inconsistent, and that's their problem, and that's the problem at large. A lot of women are deciding to sleep with men that they know are inconsistent, and they don't care. All right, so she brings up Tristan Thompson. So I'm going to put Tristan Thompson here. Keep in mind, what is Tristan Thompson? What does this go back to? What is Tr Tristan Thompson, everybody? He is, to a lot of women, I guess they would see him as hot. Why is he hot? Okay? He's hot because he is rich. He has clout, money, status, you know, in the NBA. He's He's, he, he's an NBA player, all right? This is what I find a lot of times, um, especially with, with these conversations, especially in our community, we go to athletes and entertainers as our examples. This is, this is I would say, probably the, the vast majority of what's wrong with our community is that we don't really, we don't look at real people. We look at entertainers as our guide, especially in our community. No other community really does it like this. To even use Tristan Thompson, a man who has never been married, okay, the man who just has baby mamas, okay, dating a Kardashian. I think he left his first girlfriend while she was pregnant or just had a baby. Um, she's pregnant or just had a baby. Sorry, guys. I got to, you guys know I don't even edit this stuff out. Like, there we go. <laughs> it, he ended up getting with her. They aren't married. Then he gets Khloe Kardashian pregnant out of wedlock, so two women out of wedlock pregnant, and now he was found cheating on Khloe Kardashian. She chooses to take him back. Why? Why? When Khloe could have a, a, a guy who would be faithful, she will have a man who would be faithful, but she don't want the average man. She wants the top 10%. Why? Because she thinks her money, status, and her clout means that she is up here now. But what we know from men our money status clout does not make a difference specifically to the hot guy, the top 10%. That matters to us. We assign value to that. 
All right, but she thinks she deserves, and I'm not, I don't know what she, she's thinking or not. I'm just saying, for most women in that position who have that much money and cloud status, I think I deserve a man up here because I have all this and I'm this, that, and the other. All right, rather than taking a man who's equal in looks, an average man or a man as, as this average that will be faithful, she wants the man who has all these options and a young NBA player at that. I think critical thinking will tell you this man, Tristan Thompson, what reality is it that these basketball man who has all these options is going to be faithful? If faithfulness was the number one priority we had as women, we wouldn't be picking men in this top 10%, all right? No matter what our status is. So Tristan Thompson. So this is a man who's not married, and but she wants to point him out as unfaithful, right? And I believe he had a girlfriend when she came and got with him and took him from his girlfriend. So I I'm not sure where she's going with this. But let's give, for example, poor man's podcast then goes on to point out NBA young boy. I'm going to put NBA and future. Okay, because once again, we got to use these celebrities. Look, I'm like writing down. Sorry. <laughs> I'm too tall for this thing. So that's what she's using. All right. And so he goes on to point this out. What he says is this. I'm going to have to get another paper, guys. And I'm not going to do the whole video. We're going to wrap it up because this is going to get really long. It's already long enough. She's seen, okay, and this is what poor man's podcast gets to. Let's take a guy, Tristan Thompson. This is one man, okay, one man. I'll put him here. One guy. After the first woman, which she was not married to him, okay, so he takes as the first baby mother as the one who, um, uh, after the first baby mother, then uh, any woman that gets with that man after that knows that he is not sexually responsible. He is not marriage material. I would say all three because if, if, if a woman was to wait until she got married, then we would see a very different outcome. It's only in our community that people are having babies out of wedlock at this insane rate. So I want to equalize it for the rest of the world. I don't want to do what's norm in the black community. I want to do what's norm around the world and what's been normal for centuries, for since... <laughs> since since recorded time that being in a marriage in a, a commitment okay a marriage commitment the first woman didn't require it to have you know a baby Khloe Kardashian didn't require it and neither does his new baby mama all right all right we have one man and we have three women She's saying that this man is the sexually irresponsible one, which I agree. But we have three sexually irresponsible women. Now, I'm going to show you over and over. This statistic is why it shows in the black community, I believe 80% of the children born out of wedlock in our community are produced. I can't remember the numbers. Is it 16 or 18%? I'll give it 18%. Are produced by 18% of the men. Okay. The Tristan Thompson album. So what is happening is, yes, Tristan Thompson is sexually irresponsible. I'll give you that all day. But what are these women? Let's take the same thing could be done with future. Okay? So we have future here. All right? One man. I think future has 10 baby mamas. And we're going to put them all on here. One Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, one for good measure. We have 10 women that have chosen to bring children into this world with a man. Okay? So we have one sexually irresponsible man. Where does the responsibility and accountability come for the 10 women that decided to lay down with him and have children out of wedlock and not give their children the best possible head start? Like relationships break up, marriages go through divorce. I understand that. But I'm talking about from day one. We as women are making choices to lay down. Once again, this goes back to this. We want the top 10%. The average man is not making all of these children. Okay? 
It is the one man we keep going after. This could also be shown for envy a young boy. I think he has the same number. So what is she talking about? So once again, this cancels out this argument that she's saying that all these men are knocking down all these women, all these men are bad, when it's no, the men that we are trying to go after for uh, worldly things. We're not, and especially us as black women, we're not asking God about our husband. We're not asking him to develop into a wife. We're going on our leaning on our own understanding. We're leaning on what we think is right. We won't listen to men and say what they want, especially if the man is average looking, you know, or he's not high value or a, a millionaire billionaire. Oh, his opinions don't matter if he doesn't look in the top 10 percent, make top 10 percent money. We only care about what those men think. But if the average man was to tell us, hey, no, that's not what men want out of women. Oh, it's World War III, which even in here you will see how many times she moves the goalposts, never acknowledges anything, says even when she's presented with facts, statistics, logic, reasoning, critical thinking, she will go with, I feel, I feel, it's not fair. Those are the, that's the language that's used, and it's not rooted into reality. All right, and I'm going to stop right here because I can go on and on in this video to dissect it. But what are the takeaways here? We as women are going to have to come to come to the end of ourselves with this type of thinking. We are going based off of anecdotal uh, um, uh, situations. We're going off of what celebrities are doing. We're going off of things that are um, that are not rooted in the realities of everyday men and women. The facts and the data do not support a single thing she said. And in fact, she contradicts herself over and over in this. Why is it important that we, we as women stop believing these things, that we stop just taking these as mantras, mantras for our lives? Because we will continue to not get married, we will continue to have um, the statistics not in our favor, and we will continue to get the outcomes that are negative in our lives. This isn't to put this woman down, okay? I'm not putting her down. What I'm doing is going through her logic and reasoning and really showing how there really is none here. All right. And you really, I mean, she's going to have a hard time going against poor man's podcast because this man knows what he's talking about. He's studied what he's talked about. Okay. He's out in the field talking to men. He knows what it is. And I am too. And I once probably had these types of mindsets, not quite like this. Um, a lot of it's very shocking to me today. But what I'm seeing over and over and is we as women are going to have to take the actual data. We're going to have to actually start looking at what the studies are showing. Not just our feelings, not just what friends say, not just what Tristan Thompson, uh, where is he? Oh, Tristan Thompson and the baby and the feud and future are doing. How is this, how does this make any type of sense for anybody? We are going to continue to get these negative outcomes because we are picking men based on sexual attention, sexual attraction, money, what we think they can provide, and we are not being real about intentions. So you guys leave your thoughts below. Let me know what you think about this and I'll see you in the next one.